Larry, Jerry, and my brother B, and Larry, Brandy. <laughs> I'm very glad to see you guys again after spring break. I don't think you guys have a spring break. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I just uh, visited uh, Mr. Wickstrom today because she just finished her hip replacement yesterday in Jefferson. And I also talked with my uh, supervisor, Dr. Wickstrom. He had a dental implant last month. Actually, in the United States, about uh, 3,630,000 people had the implant in 2004. It's a huge amount. With the, with the aging of the population, I think there, there are more people who have medical implant. However, <coughs> the, the, in, the implant really extended the life expect, expectancy of patients, and at the same time, it improved the quality of life. However, the implant infection is a great challenge and a great burden to the United States healthcare system. It added about one, uh, it's a one billion dollars each year to the United States healthcare system. During the past several years, I worked in a project from NIH using antibiotics to modify covalently the surface of medical implants. You, the antibiotics I used is vancomycin and daptomycin. I published several papers in internet journals. Today I want to give some information about the reason, uh, the clinical therapy, and the prevention measures used in clinic about the medical implant infection. <clears throat> Let's start with the cause of the medical implant infection. We know that there are tens of thousands of uh, microbials in, our, in the surface of our organs and on the surface of our, of our body. We call this a male belt. When the implantation surgery was carried out, many microbials on the surface of our on the surface of our organ or on the surface of our skin may be opportunistically attached to a surface of the implant. After surgery, it will grow there to form the bowel film. <clears throat> so the most possible reason is an opportunistic, opportunistic infection by staph virus, staph epidermis, and E. coli. The other reason, maybe some part of our, our body infected by pathogens. The pathogens was uh, transported to the surface of the implant by blood system. The other reason is uh, some uh, Im immune compromised patient such as uh, people with diabetes, HIV uh, infection, and, uh, and some other kind of disease may also cause the infection of implant, medical implant surface. <clears throat> Once the medical surface, in, uh, medical implant surface infection happens, what the physicians will do in clinical practice? There are two standard choices. One is locally remove the infected area and uh, locally or systemically use a large amount of antibiotics. It takes about 10 to 15 days. Unfortunately, most of the time, this strategy, this choice doesn't work. The most possible solution to medical surface, medical implant surface infection is a complete removal of the implant. It will extend the hospital stay and increase the, increase the burden of the healthcare system. There are, uh, in our, in our uh, classes in most, uh, only four guys, I think. 
Yeah, most of you, you are, are ladies. Maybe you ladies care more about the breast implantation, such as breast augmentation surgery. Actually, in the United States, each year, about uh, in 2004, about 135,000 people had breast surgery, breast implantation surgery. In two, last year, the there are about there were about uh, 350 thousand people had uh, breast augmentation surgery. Unfortunately, about 10 percent or more have to carry out the reconstruction because of the implant infection. So there are many kind of uh, measures was were taken to prevent the implant surfacing infection because there's uh, actually no optimal selection to treat men, to treat the medical implant and surface the infection. <laughs> the most important thing for prevention is to follow the standard uh, strict procedure for implant implantation surgery. Uh, during the past several years, there are several new technologies was investigated and applied to the to medical practice. One is a coating with hydroxy habitat mixed with antibiotics to coat on the surface of the medical implant. This way, once the medical implant was inserted in, in some area in the body, the coating can release antibiotics for a period of time. This way, the most of the opportunistic infection can be killed or inhibited. The other one is a polymeric membrane mixed with antibiotics. This way, the, the mem polymeric membrane stay on the surface of medical implant for a period of time, release enough antibiotics to kill the opportunistic infection, infective pathogens. During the past several years, uh, some scientists together with me working on a new area to modify the surface of medical implant with antibiotic peptide or antibiotic, antibiotics by permanently, covalently attach antibiotics on the surface of medical implant. This way, the antibiotics can stay on the surface for a long time, or to some extent, it, we can call it permanently modification. I carry out the surface modification by using vancomycin and adaptomycin, and I also invested the antibiotic activity of the antibiotics on the surface of medical implant. Consid consider in conclusion, considering the, the reason for the medical implant surface infection, and uh, actually there's no optimal therapy for the medical implant infection. So much effort should be paid to the develop, development and the investigation of a new strategy to prevent the infection of uh, medical implant infection. So this way, we'll, we give uh, most of the patient a better life. And uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Jenko.